Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Let's Max Warframe where today we're taking a look at a weapon that returned in a mini event recently and talk a little bit about its class of weapons and its future in Warframe based on the most recent dev stream. We are of course taking a look at the sniper rifles and more specifically the Snipetron. Now the Snipetron was a weapon introduced in the closed beta of Warframe but then was removed from the market and made unobtainable in update 8 because DE felt the idea of a corpus based sniper rifle using projectiles was law breaking and decided to remove the Snipetron and keep the Lanka as the premier corpus sniper rifle. So now it's been brought back into the game for a, a limited time and more players have been able to get their hands on it. So what do you actually get from this relic of a weapon? Well you get a pretty reasonable 125 base damage with the majority 100 coming in the form of puncture and 12 and a half as both slash and impact which is by no means low, but in addition to that you get a 20% ch uh, critical chance, so it's definitely able to be built for crit, much like most of the sniper rifles, although with a 1.5 times critical damage multiplier, it's definitely not the highest damaging crit weapon out there. Also noteworthy is its 10% status chance, which is fairly average, although sniper rifles, much like bows, aren't really there to spread the status procs around, Although with its innate 2.5 meters of punch through, it definitely can hit a few targets at once. Sadly though, this is kind of where the good points of the weapon ends. The base damage is the lowest of any of the snipers bar the uncharged Lanka shot. And then when you combine that with the lowest critical damage multiplier of any of the weapons in its class, it falls so far behind every other sniper rifle in terms of damage. Then you take into account the rather pathetic magazine size of just 4 and then couple that with the frankly insane reload sp uh, speed of three and a half seconds, you have a sniper rifle that doesn't just not put out much damage, it just doesn't really do it very quickly either. Although I guess trying to find a silver lining with that, sniper ammo is rare, so firing the slowest out of the snipers helps with ammo economy, maybe? I don't know. Also the use of the sniper ammo does mean that combining the snipe charm with any of the explosive secondaries like the angstrom or the castanas means its ammo capacity will be brought all the way down to 30. The same will happen with your secondary. Okay, so let's move on to starting to mod the Snipetron. Now it does come with a V polarity as standard. However, we're gonna add five former, which is gonna be another two Vs and three dashes. Now the majority of mods here are remaining the same between the three builds. Serration for damage, split chamber for multi-shot, point strike for crit chance, and vital sense for crit damage. We've also got primed fast hands on here to try and at least bring that reload speed down a little bit. Still 2.3 seconds, which isn't exactly very, uh, it's not exactly quick, but it is much better than the 3.5, so that's definitely better at least. And we've got piercing caliber, which is going to appear on all three of our builds. Now, the thing about piercing caliber it is an event mod, so not everybody has this. If you want to, you can switch this out for another 90 point elemental and pretty much every single one of these builds, the 90% elemental will be a dash. So you can fit it in here very, very easily. Now, because we're modding for the very heavy units in each of the factions, for the Grenier, we're gonna go Radiation, for the Napalms and the Bombards and things. So we're gonna go Stormbringer and Hellfire for that. For the Corpus, Cryarounds and Stormbringer for Magnetic. In the Void, Stormbringer and Infected Clip for corrosive damage. And if you are running Corrosive Projection, you can switch this out for Cryo Rounds. And then you'll be running the Viral that you'll need to take down the Corrosive Projection Void enemies. Now, as you can see, no Heavy Caliber. I feel that Heavy Caliber on this is far too much of an accuracy loss. Um, I've even got a partially ranked one at 120% uh, damage with 40% accuracy loss. Even this, I feel, is far, far too much. Um, so I would much rather put the elementals on here. I would much rather put Pierce and Caliber on here. But I would also basically keep the accuracy of the weapon and go for those crit headshots. Since if you can pull off those crit headshots, you get the extra multipliers from that, which is way more effective than potentially hitting something with heavy caliber and that isn't even guaranteed in itself. So do I think it's worth the time and effort to max it? No, not a chance. This thing is absolute rubbish of the highest order. 
The only reason I would say to put former on it is because it's rare. Even with it having been back in the game not too long ago, it's still a weapon that not everybody has. The problem is that right now the Snipetron just has too much working against it. The crit chance meaning it doesn't crit all the time. No crit, no kill. And even when you do crit, it has such a poor damage multiplier that for this type of weapon that it just falls so far behind everything else. It's not even like it can pour out a high volume of accurate fire to make up for that lack of damage. The 4 round magazine coupled with that 3.5 second reload. Even when you try to take into account and mark, uh, the, the max prime fast hands, still only 2.3 seconds for a 4 round magazine. Plus not only that, you lose another, yet another mod slot that could be being used for damage to try and counter that insane reload. But this leads me kind of nicely onto the main thing I wanted to talk about and that is sniper rifles in general. Those of you that will have been on the forums regularly will know that snipers are due to get a buff when update 18 hits later this month. But th there are changes that they showed on the dev stream and are they actually what the snipers need? Well initially they talk about a combo system similar to the melee system and that increases a stat for each multiplier reached by each shot that you hit, currently every three shots. Now, I've seen a lot of differing opinions on this, from it being awesome to not suiting snipers at all. Now, Scott actually talked about the scene from Saving Private Ryan. I hope everyone's seen that film. It's a fantastic film where he fires shot after shot after shot in a rhythm. He gets a flow going and just keeps on firing. And that's what he's trying to recreate with the combo system. Personally, I really like the idea. It really, really rewards accuracy. Although 50% more damage every three shots is maybe a little over the top right now, and I very much doubt we'll see it remain like that. And the time that the combo takes a decay needs to be long enough so that the sniper can take another shot. Too quick, and instead of rewarding accuracy, you are forcing them to take another shot whether they're ready or not, making them rush their shots and actually punishing accuracy. Although he did say that this was a possibility of um, a buff like reload speed or even accuracy included in that combo system. Which also has the potential to reward accurate players that are just in the zone and then pride themselves on accuracy. So there's definitely a big plus from me on that one, that's for sure. Now the part I'm not so keen on and I'm not going to hide my distaste for this idea. And that is zoom related stat increases to the rifle. In the demo from the dev stream on Friday, the Lanka came with four zoom levels. A three time zoom, adding uh, 0.2 to the critical chance. A seven time zoom, adding 0.3 to the critical chance. 12 times zoom, adding uh, 0.4 to the critical chance. And a 20 time zoom, adding 0.5 to the critical chance. Now, remember this is only a test right now. The numbers for the stats might be placeholders. But I kind of wanted to talk about the principle of the zoom levels. Warframe right now is a close range game, and like enemies will charge at you every single opportunity you have. And the tile sets are just not up to handling this type of long range combat. There is maybe one or two tile sets where a 20 time zoom is even going to work. I mean, even on the demonstration by Rebecca on the dev stream, you can see that 20 time zoom is far too much for that tile set. Which brings up the issue that you're then missing out features and buffs to the weapon purely because the tile sets are not conducive to that type of gameplay. I am by no means saying that no multiple zoom levels are, you know, you shouldn't have multiple zoom levels at all, but tying stats to that just limits things far too much. And instead of rewarding long range accuracy, it punishes you for your choice of tile set. Now, I definitely hope this is not something that makes it to the final change for snipers because I really don't feel it's something that benefits the class. It just, like I say, it just punishes you for the tile sets you're playing on. Now, honestly, I like the idea of the combo system. I think it fits snipers just fine. However, the main problem on snipers isn't really just the fact that the snipers right now aren't actually very good. The critical chance is too low. There's no guaranteed crits, for example, and the uh, base damage isn't taken into account. You don't get a higher base damage because you get the lower crit. And their role in the game, which is supposed to be high single target damage, nailing heavy units before they become a threat. But that role is already taken by the bows. 
both the Paris Prime and the Dread red crit, which means they crit every single time. And if you get the red crit, you get way more damage. And even though it doesn't red crit without critical delay, the Rat Cernos has an insane base damage to make up for that and a blistering rate of fire. The sniper rifles in the game are outclassed by the bows and have beaten their own game. Snipers need something that makes them stand aside from the bows, like shifting their roles slightly, add the ability for high velocity rounds from a sniper rifle to bypass a nullifier shield. If the bows aren't going to be toned down, which I don't think they will at this point, and the snipers are not going to be brought up to the same level as a bow, which it doesn't sound like they're going to be, they need their specific role. Having someone on a T4 defense or a Triton run with a high velocity sniper rifle like a Vectis, like the Snipetron, picking off targets like nullifiers, it might actually give them a role again and would see more use in the high level gameplay. Yeah, you know, I don't know, these are just my thoughts on the matter. I would definitely be interested to see in the comments below how you guys feel about the sniper rifles, how they could be buffed, and how just they might be brought up to standard in game, especially with that update 18 buff around the corner. However, back on track, the Snipetron. Low magazine, crazy long reload, low crit chance, and lack of reliable crits, and low crit damage too. It's not worth the time and effort to max. If you want a good sniper rifle to max, try out the Vectors, or the Lanka, or if you're lucky enough, the Snipetron Vandal. With a bit of luck, my Vandal actually will be able to see the light of day again soon. Roll on update 18, and as always guys, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments, Thanks very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video.